Um, due to Governor Baker's uh, March order uh, restricting in-person meeting attendance, this meeting is being conducted by Zoom. Our meeting agenda, let me see if I can find it. Um, is I think basically just to get started again. Here we go. Who's here? <laughs> I'm here. So I think you have the entire um, remainder of the committee, which is yeah, salaries, me as the finance committee non-voting member. John is gone. So you're down one person. Yeah, um, Margaret, have you heard any, um, I'm sorry, I have minimized my video and I can't make it big again. Oh, there we go. Um, have you heard any uh, possibility that anyone is interested in joining us? No, not yet. I was, I was talking, I was talking with Michael earlier and we, we have to do a, we have to do some sort of strong marketing campaign to get committee members mm -hmm. on board. Um, we're losing them on most, you know, on most committees. People are busy, um, so we've got to we've got to do something. We'll get you somebody. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, we'll just you know keep trucking along. Eloise and I will make all the decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, but Margaret's the check and balance, so don't there worry. You <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> We'll try not to go too crazy, right, Eloise? <laughs> oh, I don't know. She might like excitement. <laughs> oh, can't wait to hear. <laughs> well, the um, Helio pad. Oh. Helio pad. Oh, oh you, you want to create one, Eloise? Yeah, and I think we should have a walkway over the center of town, you know? There we go. <laughs> like a, a big suspension bridge? That sounds sure. cool. Where are we While we're doing that, can we just reroute traffic around town? So if you don't live in town, you're not allowed to come in? Nope. So I understand there has been discussion of, of rerouting 62. So when you, if you're coming from 495, that when you get to the general store, you would have to turn right. Is that Carter Street? That is Carter Street. Yes and go around the church, basically. Oh, all right. So here's, here's what the scuttlebutt has been. And any, uh, any Capital Planning Committee member of the Traffic Safety Advisory Committee will, will hear these things firsthand. But it's not rerouting 62. What, that would actually, what the discussion has informally mm. been is to create a create one way road, so one way uh, around the triangle, so you're okay. not coming and going on Woodward okay, and Carter. Okay. So that has been like a preliminary discussion. The board, uh, the board um, chief has mentioned this um, this thought, and it's possible we might do some sort of pilot there to test it out. But it's going to involve, you know, it's going to have to involve um, a lot of community input with all the neighbors and you know the butters up there. So. Any thoughts and about the church? The, uh, mm -hmm. And the church, yes. The church. And any thoughts about the uh, South Pleasant intersection? The South and Pleasant intersection. That's going to be another topic discussed at the Traffic Safety Advisory Committee um, because that at, that intersection is actually part of the Riverbridge Development Agreement. So we have to determine how that's going to. Uh, be resolved. And I know that there had been thoughts before about making that a T intersection instead of the Y intersection. It currently is doing something to, to straighten it out there. But that's another thing that's going to be discussed. Yeah. Tom has suggested that we just close the section of South between Pleasant and uh, Crosby. Crosby. Yeah. Uh, and, and the other day as I was walking, I just got, I, I saw what, what Tom says happens frequently is there was a truck who decided he would make the U-turn there and he was out in um, uh, Tim's field. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, not not a safe situation they at all. They make that turn. They try, they try really hard, but the yeah. the trailer wow. doesn't make it, and they're out in the field. Yeah. How so about five corners? <laughs> five corners. Um, so five corners. That's um, Derby and uh, Ball Hill, et cetera. Yeah. No. Okay. There is not. Okay. So the discussion, and it was. It's been a very, very, very preliminary discussion. It's almost like a thought. <laughs> so um, there are transportation improvement projects that can be done regionally, and so the thought was to take a section of 62, say from Pleasant Street all the way up to Five Corners and redo that stretch through a transportation improvement program or th through that funding. Um, and what it could do is it could address, you know, the traffic issues, um, culvert replacements, because there are culverts along that stretch that need to be replaced, sidewalks, so have a really, um, you know, develop a really big project. With Five Corners itself, I'd be surprised if they didn't propose a, a rotary, but the railroad tracks there just are in the way. So I don't know, that would be for engineering to determine how to best handle that. Well, that's come up for discussion for the last 30 years. It's just <laughs> never gotten beyond that. Yeah, yeah. And this is where the Traffic Safety Advisory Committee comes in, um, hopefully to be able to discuss big projects and small projects. Everything from sign requests all the way up to those transportation improvement program projects. So, so that brings us to G, who wants to be on traffic safety because one of us is required to, correct, Margaret? Or well, the, the CPC does have a seat on that committee. Yeah, don't everybody raise your hands. Um, well, I, I would say I would do it, but since I'm leaving soon, it would just create one more problem. Mm. Given the election situation and my personal situation, maybe I can do it starting uh, January 1, but I don't think it's wise for me to take something else on mm. at this time. Mm -hmm. We can also designate it if we don't have a member who has the time. So here's a thought. It's not absolutely necessary for, um, for the committee to designate a member now. I'm gonna be at every one of those meetings and I can convey the information to you on a temporary basis anyway, until the committee is, is ready to designate someone. So if you'd like to just proceed like that, um, we can, you know, I can share any information with you. I don't know. Anna, do you have secret desires to be on this committee? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, actually, I wouldn't be opposed to being on the committee, except for the time constraints. Um, uh, I just, I, it's multifactorial, um, but certainly the next meeting being at three o'clock in the afternoon on Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's, there's and we can discuss and we can discuss future meeting dates and times as well. Yeah. Um, but n I'm certainly not dying to be on the committee. And I think, I guess I would suggest if it's all right with Margaret, at least for the first meeting, we hold off on designating a meet, a uh, uh, um, person to go. There's a word for that. Mm -hmm. Um, a member and uh, see what Margaret reports and how that first meeting goes and um, sort of maybe play it meeting by meeting and see if we can build up our own uh, membership at the same time and then see how things sort of work out meeting by meeting. Will that work or? If that's all we've got, that's what it is. <laughs> Are you dying, Eloise, for me to go to those meetings? <laughs> no, I realize you have a life. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, will the meetings be will the meetings be taped yes mm -hmm. yes and so we can watch them just to mm -hmm. as well as getting an update yeah they're going to need to be taped because if i'm doing minutes i'm not going to be able to take minutes and participate in the meeting at the same time so i'll have to use the tape to take minutes <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, fun stuff. 
Okay. Do we need All right, to so we'll, we'll, do, we'll do that for now. Okay. 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 Do we need to make a motion on that? No, no, you don't have to. No. Okay. Um, so other than that, I think we have just reviewing our sort of where we're at at the moment. Yeah. Um, so we, I say we, Margaret put out the um, request to department heads um, for this year mm -hmm. um, around September 1st. It wasn't quite there, but. It was around there because it was about two full months to put requests together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now we're just waiting, right? Have you heard we're any waiting. scuttlebutt? Excuse me? Have you heard any scuttlebutt about yes. requests? Yes. Yes. But not, well, yes, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to speculate. Uh, we do know that we have a failed air handler on the roof of the town offices. Mm -hmm. So that happened this year. So all summer we've been running on one air handler and miraculously given this heat, you'd think that that one handler would have frozen up and it did not. Mm -hmm. You watch tomorrow. It will. <laughs> but anyway, um, one of them is, is, is gone and uh, it's 20 years old. And so there needs to be a replacement. Um, so the board is actually thinking about whether or not that should be something that's supported to go to a fall town meeting so we could get going on a procurement before uh, annual town meeting is over. Um, so that's one thing. So that would be a possible current year um, request. Now the other, another one that I've heard some scuttlebutt on uh, is through conservation. Conservation wants to acquire the, uh, the Laura property and it, there's a significant cost to it. And I've advised, I mean, this is a, I don't, uh, the, if they didn't really realize that it's a capital request and needs to go through the capital request process, but I think they now understand that it's actually a major capital item, you know? And so um, I've encouraged them to put together a capital request form and all the background needed um, with regard to their proposed funding and everything. So you might see that coming forward sooner rather than later. Um, Where is that property? Excuse me. This is the Laura property on Linden. Is this the corner of Linden and Linden and Lyman? Linden and Lyman. Yes. So yes. Mount Pisgah. I don't think it's Mount. Well, it's it might have butted. Base. It might have butted. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's it's a large it's a large parcel, um, and they've been working uh, quite a bit with Sudbury Valley trustees on it. So mm -hmm. and it's at, and it's used by a lot of people for passive recreation already. So um, they just need to prepare um, to defend their request. That's what they need to do. Now, the th is this I just a moment? Is this yeah. eligible for any state grants or has yes. The state it could be eligible for a land grant. all of them. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I said, oh, I has this. Do you know if the state has already suspended any option grants? To my knowledge, they have not suspended any the grants that might be able to be used for this land acquisition. The problem with the land acquisition is that, and you saw that the town saw this recently with another land acquisition, they applied for a land grant and they were not granted. They were not awarded the land grant. So the town spent the money um, and didn't receive any of the funds back. So what they would hope on this, a land grant is a, um, um, it's through the, I wanna say the um, Executive Office of Environmental Affairs. Um, and, a substantial portion of the cost could be reimbursed, I believe at 50% 50, uh, 50 um, so they would be applying for the land grant, but there's no guarantee and it is a reimbursement grant. Um, so there's that and there's also, um, according to John, Annie, there's another grant that they might be eligible for. I'm not entirely clear on, on that one. Um, um, so anyway, that's where that stands at the moment. I guess we'll get more information when CONCOM's request comes in. Now the three uh, capital projects that the Capital Planning Committee had, had previously approved, well two capital projects in stabilization funding, 
um, those were deferred to special town meeting. So um, the first was the tree work. So I have put that on a list of possible special town meeting articles for the fall um, as a deferred um, capital item from the, from the spring. Um, and that was $60,000 for contract tree removal. And I know, I have a really good feeling that that's gonna be supported by a lot of people. So they are ready for that tree removal. There are a lot of dead um, trees around. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? There are a lot of dead trees around. Yeah, yeah. So um, there's that one. And the next one was the hot top, which was kind of the annual uh, supplement to chapter 90 funds. And then the final, the final was all but a hundred dollars of the capital stabilization funding that the committee had uh, voted mm -hmm. to put in. So you'd put in a hundred dollars, that leaves $124,900 that, um, <laughs> that the committee, I mean, I'm, so my suggestion is that the CPC discuss um, it's prior approvals on these and whether or not you want to proceed with um, recommending them for the fall special. So my first question is, how is the town doing financially? Do we have any idea of what the COVID impact has been yet? So it's still very, very early, but so far we are doing okay. Um, we, our, um, our tax revenues, um, our real estate taxes, um, the, the rate of collections was about 97%, which is typical for a normal year. Um, what we, we don't know the full impact of, uh, to commercial. That's, that's the big area that we need to pay attention to. Um, so far it's okay, but we hear all the time how, um, you know, various businesses, especially in the hospitality industry, are just folding. And um, so we still have yet to hear about that. Um, so far, so good. Um, what else? Excise tax. Um, you know, we expect that there will be some, you know, some decline in excise tax collections, uh, but that won't be until next year. So, um, and then as far as state aid, um, so far, uh, FY21, the state has not adopted a budget yet, but so far for FY21, they are level funding state aid um, receipts and assessments for now, but I think they're actually going to be calculating the FY21 assessments soon. So anyway, that was a long answer to your question. We are doing okay as of now. Okay. So, Margaret, <laughs> is, is there a tax bill coming out soon, like in November? Yes. Yeah, should be by mid-November. Is that October. the second half of the prior tax bill or is that the new tax no, bill? No, this is the first half That's of the new year. Okay, so we don't know what we, we don't know what the amount is going to be yet. We don't know what the amount is going, going to be yet. Um, this is a reval year, so there'll be some change, but we, you know, as you know, the Finance Committee made every effort to control um, uh, yeah. the, the increases. Um, free cash. So in prior years, the Capital Planning Committee has been given some number um, that it could use. What we're trying to do is really come up with an actual number that the Capital Planning Committee um, could use. And you, you might remember last year's the, the free cash guidelines that we talked about. Um, by establishing those, we're essentially starting to build an actual number that the Capital Planning Committee uh, could use for a capital budget and to fund uh, capital stabilization. Mm -hmm. Finance Committee is going to be discussing that, I think, tomorrow night. Isn't that right, Michael? I think so. Okay. That's the plan. <laughs> so there's that. Now, where the number last year was a million dollars, the way I kind of look at this now, and I'm not going to give you any kind of calculation or anything, but the way I'm, I'm looking at um, the free cash allocations, it would be about $850,000 this year. Um, the free cash came in very high um, last year, and it's going to be high again this year because we put a spending freeze on in FY20. There's going to be a lot of money turned back from accounts that's not usually, that isn't usually turned back. So for two years running, I think we're going to see a healthy amount of free cash, and if free cash guidelines can be put in place to programmatically fund various buckets, then we'd be in good and stable shape. Yeah, I don't know how the, there, there are various opponents to those guidelines. Uh, I know, I, I know. Including one current member of the uh, select board. 
Yes, that's correct. And I'm trying to explain, I've done my best to try to explain why it's good to put guidelines and policies and procedures in place. I hear on Friday mornings. <laughs> <laughs> um, Margaret? Well, yes. Uh, getting back to the air handler, and I saw it today, CMRCP is going to do the energy uh, thank, report. Thank goodness, that's a lifesaver, yes. Yes, but can they also check and see if the ear handler is uh, uh, eligible under the energy grants? I don't think they can because they're just assisting us with our annual report, but I could ask Kelly. Okay. I'm sure they, whatever air handlers they're making now, uh, are more efficient than the ones 20 years ago. <laughs> oh, definitely. But it brings the question to my mind is, are there other things that will need to be replaced or repaired incidental to the actual air handler? Mm -hmm. All right, I will ask Kelly. Um, and then we'll have to look at our energy reports um, to find out what, um, what other equipment and systems are tied to those air handlers. It, it was in the report of 2018. I just reread it a little while ago. 2018, okay. Yeah. It's a non-pharmaceutical way to go to sleep. <laughs> you like those, Eloise. <laughs> I'm glad you're exploring your options. That's me. <laughs> All right. The other thing that I, had wanted to accomplish last year and, and couldn't, and it's been very difficult to even start it this year, um, is a real true five-year capital plan. Um, I wanna build it from scratch. Um, I want to list assets, starting with buildings, uh, land and infrastructure anyway, and some equipment. I mean, we can get put some equipment in. Um, but I want to, um, June maintains a list of, of assets, you know, in all these categories. Mm -hmm. So I wanna, I'm sorry. Eloise? I just said yes. I know that. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So I, what I want to do is I want to take that and I want to put it into a capital plan, not only um, uh, not only to show what we have for assets and what's needed, but also to track what we've done to the various assets, what improvements we've already made. So I'm, I've got, this is an example. This is just one page of probably 50 pages of, of assets. So I'm going mm. to... Um, so I have a folder of assets. You have the folder of assets? I have a folder of assets. I have my, this is my you folder. More your folder of assets. <laughs> Binders full of assets. Right. Um, but this is mostly land and then June's list um, plus some, uh, some equipment. Okay. Um, we had definitely started cataloging um, assets. So we oh, have... Okay pretty good complete as far as we're aware list for on the committee for, yeah through the committee good and you did a spreadsheet of them no uh i lie i think yes there is a spreadsheet that john had and i, I was going to say john did it oh yeah john did it okay That's always the answer let me see if i can search my computer and find one wow well, then I wouldn't have to reinvent the wheel. No, don't reinvent the wheel. That's why I stopped you, because we okay. have... We've got a partial wheel anyway. Yes, we have, I, I think our wheel has like four or five spokes instead of... <laughs> Where are we? Capital planning. At the, at the end of that, I would like to see it all available online. Oh, so that would be... If be people wonderful. wanted to see it at 2 a.m. because they were in a bar having a fight, they can. <laughs> <laughs> Betting on what was done and what wasn't done to a building. That's well, funny. some of them get very heated. <laughs> Not the buildings, the people. Uh, yeah. No, no, absolutely. That should be up. I went on one side. I almost think it was Lincoln. And they, they, it was down to like two pages per building. And wow. it would say when the heating was last updated, when the plumbing was installed, when it was updated. I mean, it was very concise. 
Where did you find that on their website? I believe so, yes. We should steal it. In the town of Lincoln? I will try to remember because I thought I had saved it. Mm -hmm. It's one of those you want to go back to just because it was just so factual mm -hmm. and concise. Mm -hmm. Some of them are just full of air. Yeah. True. I'm used to working on multiple um, multiple spreadsheet tabs, you know, one for each category and then lists within each category and then doing a, um, uh, a summary of all the, you know, of the capital costs over the course of the five years and things like that as a last tab. But I, I'm all for doing it in a, in a simpler way. I did stuff like that when I was the treasurer so that I could have linking spreadsheets so mm -hmm. that I, mm -hmm. I could see, okay, they're paying X amount, you know, they paid 30,000 to repair a truck. Well, if you bought it, even if you bought it uh, on credit, you know, pay twenty five dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, it. I found that valuable. Yeah, it is. Okay, I am not at least easily finding on this computer um, that spreadsheet. Um, let me see what I have in my folder. Um, but I can email John and see what he can send me because I'm sure okay. he, he didn't. This wasn't last year's. This was the year before last, maybe. Here we go. I, I remember. So I have um, a spread, a printed spreadsheet. I don't have the file, but I have the print. I can hold oh, it. Oh, look at that! Okay. <laughs> so this had to have come from John. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, this says draft 20 January of 2019 from 116 2019. Okay. So let me email john. I'll see what he can send me. If he can't send me anything. I will scan in and email out the documents I do have. Um, but yeah, we were trying to put that together. And then in 2020, we sort of let it slide. Mm. Has That's June done hers? It. Has June done um, the asset thing for accounting? She does. She has it, but she's still operating on the old asset tracking software. She is not using the new software yet, which mm. would allow downloads, which would be very helpful. Um, but she is maintaining it, but it's on the old system still. Yeah, but is, is there thoughts to bringing it over to the new system? Oh, yes, absolutely. That's <laughs> I mean, in my lifetime? <laughs> I, I think this year, Eloise, <laughs> I think this year, it's a matter of transferring the data from the old software to the new. And my is hope it, is that it's not too complicated. Is that something June would have to do? Or is that something they could hire? How much would it cost for the people that you brought the new software from? I, I can't answer that. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. I don't know how involved it is. Yeah. But boy, that would certainly help match up the data from her list to the spreadsheet that John put together. That would be, that'd be great. Invaluable. Yeah. yeah. When when we started this, we sort of gathered as much individual department information as we could and then went to June and got her list and cross referenced um, the list, but then have not updated have not updated yeah. since. I think we were we were sitting back and waiting for June to first get her new software and then all okay. the new software. And so we sort of paused we didn't, because we didn't, we didn't wish to be redundant. Exactly. Yeah. 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 There's no sense in doing that if this is around the corner. Um, I can check with um, June to see, you know, what the what the proposed time frame is on on that. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I definitely think it'd be a great idea to get not only a list together, but a list of of what we had done, where things had gone 
at one point when there were more members, we were talking about splitting up and each of us going to a department and looking at what they had, mm -hmm. um, saying, hey, we have, you know, this 1957 Ooh. fire truck on our, on our list here. Where is it? What happened to it? Is it still here? <laughs> um, those sorts of things. And I know um, Richard, who was an architect, went and looked at some of the buildings, um, but then he left our committee. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Margaret, speaking of buildings, I saw something through my email about repairs to the um, Historical Commission house. Mm -hmm. um, they, yeah. Is that all their fundage? They have, yes, they are using prior funding to have a structural survey done. And the intent of doing the structural survey is to provide a more comprehensive plan for the building and to identify, well, identify all the areas um, that, um, that need work so that they could be eligible, well, in part, so they could be eligible for historic preservation grants through the Mass Historic, Pres um, uh, Mass historic uh, um, Commission. Um, that the commission, the state commission requires that either an architectural study or a structural survey or something be done kind of as a holistic uh, mm -hmm. picture instead of, um, in, instead of repairs here and there. So they, they want the full picture. Um, so the hope is that they'd be able to qualify for grants by doing that. Okay. Um, anybody else have any other thoughts? So we should discuss those three items for um, a special town meeting. The first being the trees, um, $60,000 for tree removal, which was 150 trees or 300 trees. Yeah, it's up to 300 trees. Um, which would take his, a... esti his estimated 800, right? He estimated 800. I'll tell you, taking care of 200 to 300 of the trees. Worst in the, or, yeah. yeah, it'll make a it'll make a dent in. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I don't think for me that that sounds inappropriate. I'm still OK with the tree removal. I don't vote, but I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Eloise? I do vote, and I was wondering, are there any, given the economy, are there any vehicles that are available at a very significant discount? Oh, like a bucket truck? Yeah. But this wasn't buying I don't. a truck. This was, this was just hiring somebody to do it. I know. Yeah. You might okay. get, you know, if you can pay 100 for a truck, you can get at least two or 300 trees per year at a minimal cost. That's but we're gonna to need to pay 100 for a truck. We're yeah, going to need to have all the staff trained. We're probably gonna to need to add personnel. Um, we're going sure. to, um, we are going to assume all the liability um, and well, workers comp claims, you name it, anything associated with our, with our crews cutting the trees. I don't disagree with you, but we have to understand the ancillary costs associated with a bucket truck. Mm -hmm. I'm just, because they're, no, they're going to but they to could also re do uh, street light repair. Yeah. If you had a bucket truck, mm -hmm. but and hopefully we have long lasting lights and that won't be quite an issue. Hopefully. But other than that, I support the article. It's just if you go to town meeting, you have to be prepared to answer those types of questions. Well, I can tell you that would be my answer. And it's not that I, you know, it's not that I would recommend opposing, <laughs> opposing it. It's just that it needs to be crystal clear that there are associated operating costs that go with it. Uh -huh. Of course. Mm -hmm. And the hot top? 
No, I like potholes. You know, gives you some place to hide. You are in rare form tonight. <laughs> it's called tired. <laughs> I leave Berlin at seven. Oh. It's somewhere that was paved, but I was amazed. Oh, it's the stretch of road coming. What is that? North. It comes in right from, from North Row, right over to where I am, Newton Street. And then there's a stretch which has been all potholes and it was suddenly paved today. Wow, what a treat. Yes. <laughs> and I slowed down to five miles an hour and I said, oh my goodness, I can go 20. <laughs> <laughs> I would like more potholes on my street. I would like them to slow the people down. Where's your street? I'll come see what I can do. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. <laughs> That's why I want to be on the traffic safety. Can I get some signs? There you go. We're going to be talking sign requests too. <laughs> um, I, I think uh, Mary. Yes. Yeah, my, my street is often well represented in the complaint department. But you and Mary live on the same street? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's downwind of that new oh. senior housing building. Uh, Have you guys known? been up to there? Who's in charge, Margaret, of making sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing? Well, we've got the building commissioner who's, supposed, who's watching. Um, as far as use of the roads, I don't think, uh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't um, say, I don't Laura think. Laura Mullery complained and I referred her to the police chief and I believe police. something about the trucks. I, I called, um, Chief Galvin, when I watched a semi truck drive two cars off the road because he came around the corner at Carter Street um, into Highland Street going quite fast and in the middle of the road. So the um, Fred Brewer and his wife and some other car that I didn't know, they had to literally like dive into the ditches, on, one on either side um, to accommodate the semi truck. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and that requires that yeah. requires a police um, presence. But yeah, Chief has been up there several times too. Yeah, it's gotten better, but it's still. Mm. Mm. Um, but it's not just them, unfortunately, either. Uh, so hot top, are we okay with hot top, Eloise? Yep. Okay. Me too. Um, only if they do your road last. Yeah. <laughs> no, they could come and they could put some speed bumps in. Yeah, but they're hard when you start plowing. Yeah, that's true. How yeah, about just detours? They're broken plows. Yeah. The yeah, plows. Yeah. You know, as Margaret says, everything you do has a consequence and a cost. It does. That's very true. Um, so finally, capital um, committee stabilization. stabilization fund. Do we need one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars or one hundred and twenty-four thousand nine hundred dollars at this juncture? If, if it's needed elsewhere, no. But if it isn't, that would be a good seed money. It sets a tone. Are there other Margaret? Are there other committees with? Um, sort of our stature and stabilization funds, or are we paving the way for other people? Energy Committee established one. Energy and I'm on that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot oh, of it is it you? <laughs> because in order to apply for energy a grant, you have to put upfront money. Yeah. And, and you know, it's six of one, half dozen of another. Either the timing isn't right and you can't get a town vote or there was no money. Mm -hmm. And how much, do you know how much you guys have in your stabilization fund or how much you aim to keep I it? I think $4,000. Mm -hmm. That's something but that I we need to add. That. We need to add that to the special town meeting to make that um, funding go in there automatically. 
capital planning committee spends more than any other committee. Oh, other, I, than, other than the finance committee. Yeah, true, true. Um, but we don't often run into the you need money in order to get money aspect. The, the state goes through cycles. And when, when you have a democratic governor, et cetera, they just give it if you meet these, you know, these five invisible qualifications. Republicans want to see you put some blood, sweat, and tears into it. You know, it's not bad. You just need to know the rules a year or two in advance, and sometimes that's hard. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen in November? Damn if I know. Things my, will change either way. My crystal ball is foggy. We're not, we don't have a gubernatorial election this year, do we? Mm -hmm. No, we have a very small ballot. I just saw it this morning and we there's seven offices up and there's only two questions. Hmm. Question one, right to repair. Right, and the second one is choice ranked voting. Choice ranked voting? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in, instead of, of, of voting for one, you rank order, rank preference. You know, if there's five candidates, you list them as you want, one, two, three, four, five. So in and district, whichever it was, like where Auschwitz won with 22%, uh, you would have- You won't get it until you, at the point you got 50% of the vote, then you're declared the winner. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder what that- what sort of effect that'll have? Uh, Maine has it currently, and I think there's one other state. They're trying to get away, I guess, from winner takes all, because that, if you're not part of the majority, you lose interest in your government. And so they're trying to um, say, basically, your vote counts. So, so I'm, I'm wondering, Ever since I was a, a student here, which was in the 60s, I have, it was always amazed me that Massachusetts, which has a way, way, way large Democratic majority, elects Republican governors so much. Mm -hmm. And, and the, only, the only answer I can come up with is because the various Democratic factions split and can't decide on anything, and then they won't agree. And so the Republican wins. Sorta. Of. It's a check and balance. Other other states do it differently. Yeah. What school did you attend? I, I read in, attended that little tech school in Cambridge. Ah. <laughs> did you put the car up on the roof of that dome building? No, but it happened while I was there. And then shortly I. I it may have been the year after I left that they uh, ex put the explosives underneath uh, Soldier's Field turf. Oh, I didn't hear. I've never heard that story. That sounds... Oh, oh for the Harvard-Yale game. Oh, God. When the field exploded. Yeah. <laughs> uh, My wife was there in the stands. Oh, wow. I didn't know her at the time. You met in the emergency room, or? <laughs> no, we, we, we actually met at the St. Patrick's Day party several years later. Ah, just talking about stuff you had in common, huh? <laughs> well, you know, after 48 years or whatever it's been, we, we, we've had a lot of chance to talk about lots of things. <laughs> well, congratulations. Yeah, it surprised us too. Yeah, I... Yeah. I was married for 40 years and 20 days. Wow. Mm. And then he died of pancreatic cancer. Oh, oh I'm sorry. That's nasty. It mm. is. Nasty. Mm. But I can recognize the journey. Mm. It is that, isn't it? No matter what you're talking about. It's always a journey. Yep. Not fun sometimes. 
That is true. Mm -hmm. But notice I wasn't up on murder charges. <laughs> oh, some days I think I'm going to be. Um, so stabilization fund. Uh, I guess I propose three options. Either we say we postpone for this year, or we say we ask for it all for this year, or mm -hmm. we ask for some smaller amount um, and just try to get something in the fund. Uh, Mike, so we established the fund at the, at the annual town meeting, I believe, and, and we, we put a hundred bucks in. We didn't we put more than a hundred dollars in? Wasn't there a hundred dollars? Yes. Well, the hundred dollars from free cash, but there was also uh four thousand dollars that was the balance in the uh Highland Commons Capital Fund. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so we have forty one hundred dollars in there, now. something like that. Yeah, um, what is our I mean, if if we say we want want to take a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars from free cash. What does that do to our free cash um, account? It does nothing different than what you had originally intended, um, except right now we do not have certified free cash. Free cash closes out at the end of the fiscal year. We now have to wait to have it certified again. It's And last year it came in at, at $1.2 million. It's likely to come in even higher than that this year. Um, so, you know, the capital planning committee could certainly defer um, this and wait for the finance committee to have a conversation about the use of free cash guidelines and things like that. Um, you know where where I stand on this as far as, you know, financial best practices and things of that nature, but I also understand what the town has done in the past um, in using general stabilization to uh, purchase capital items. Um, so, I, I'm open. I'm open to letting it sit to have more discussion on the use of free cash guidelines and defer it to next year. Uh, but I also think that ultimately the fund is the special stabilization fund is going to need to be built up so that mm -hmm. we have um, a way uh, to mitigate some, you know, large debt service costs and things like that. Mm hmm. It may be wise to wait until after the uh, finance committee has had a discussion. When do we have to have a decision by in order to make this special town meeting? Not for a while because um, I'm trying to, um, based on Eloise's availability, I'm trying to get the board to agree to have special town meeting on November 30th. Um, and it may, given the list of um, articles that were that were deferred from the spring, it may require two nights even. So it wouldn't be for a while longer, at least another month. Okay. So oh, would... by then you'd have the, the idea of the cost of the handler. You might know, you might have a better handle on potentially free cash and the finance committee could have spoken. Yes. You know, it's worthwhile. Yeah. So I say we table it for today um, okay. and discuss at our next meeting um, and see what FinCom is, see what everybody has said between now and then. That's valid. Okay, thanks. Good. Yeah. And when will all the finance stuff be going out? Or is that gonna be decided tomorrow? When you say the finance stuff, you mean at request, budget requests? Yeah. Margaret, have you have you sent that anything out for that yet? The budget calendar? Um, oh, I previously sent that. I sent that before um, Stan canceled last week's meeting, I think. It hasn't changed since you last saw it. Okay. All right. So I, I, I could resend it tomorrow like before November you just... or, or thereabout. Excuse me? Things are due like November 1st or thereabouts. Budget requests of uh, capital planning. Um, the deadline to submit to capital planning is November 1st. The deadline to submit FY22 budget requests will be November 27th. Okay, all right. Mm. <laughs> Anybody else? We, um, as far as uh, future meetings, do we want to move to 
Thursdays or Tuesdays or move back to Thursdays, whatever works for anyone. Uh, what works for you, Anna? Uh, yeah, for me, any day. As long as it's evening and especially since we can Zoom, um, my, my days are all the same. Um, they're crazy till I get home and then they're quiet. What's um, the earliest time you're available? table that until we have other people. And by that time, Margaret would have a better handle on where her schedule is. And... Oh, I'm flexible. <laughs> I can meeting hop perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, that that's definitely a certainly a concern is being Well, I, I just don't want to set stuff in stone and then have a potential new member who says, oh, I can't that's the one time I can't do blah. Right. right. So what about our next meeting? How about that? We'll just set that one and then we'll play it by ear. I don't sure. we're required to have regular a regular set schedule. I don't have a problem. We're really required, what, November, December, and January, and then we're done, really. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Maybe well, you have to have, to have a report here. to the selectmen by the end of January. I, I do think somewhere in our description it says, you know, this committee will meet monthly October through January. So on October, Thursday, October 15th, there are no evening meetings booked yet. Okay. That works, I think, for me. Okay, do you want to post it, Anna, and you can be the beloved chairman and set the agenda? <laughs> I will do so. I will do it um, right after I email John. Well, are we still going to be doing Zoom for the foreseeable future? Or you don't as much know as I, As much as I don't want to, I, I think that probably for the next, probably for the next couple of months anyway, we'll be doing Zoom. Um, you know, we'll be doing some sort of Zoom for the next few months anyway. Okay. Are there some things happening in the town offices at the? Yeah, well, we um, we do business now by appointment, so um, people can come and and do business transactions. And I'm actually itching to get back to doing normal, regular business transactions, because I do not foresee that um, we're going to have lines of people and crowds of people coming in on a daily basis. I think people have gotten used to the whole remote thing. Um, but we do have to wait. We have not been able to get our hands on disinfecting sprayers yet, and that we won't we won't fully reopen until we have those. Hmm. So they're on. They've been backlogged for months. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I guess I'm going to call it, unless anybody has. Um, I will email Mary now and ask her to book a Zoom for um, for October fifteenth at seven p.m. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Are we? Are we? If when we adjourn, I will pause this, and then Anna, I have a question for you after the meeting. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Um, so I guess I will adjourn it at this moment. At my computer says seven fifty-nine p.m. <laughs>